Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. Y'all have been waiting on this tutorial and I'm going to be honest with you, this is actually the third tray that I have worked on and the other two have been tossed. <laughs> There's still things that I wish I would have done differently on this one and I don't know what it was with these heart-shaped trays. Usually I do pretty great with new designs for these trays but I definitely had a creative block. Now we are going to start out by giving this one nice thin coat of blush color fix paint and it's crazy but the very first step is something that I wish I would have done a little bit differently. I do not show it on camera because I was a little frustrated in the end because it didn't quite turn out the way that I wanted or something just wasn't right. So I ended up going in with more paint all around the edges in the back. So if you think that you're going to use a lighter color glitter or anything that's really going to make that raw wood stand out on the side and not really go with your project, take your paint all over the wood board. And then once your paint has dried, if you still want it to have that natural wood grain look, you can take a piece of 400 grit sandpaper or higher and go all around your edges and the back of your board and it's going to allow that wood grain to pop through and smooth out your paint. After I had painted the center, I just went in with my heat gun on low heat setting and dried that up so we can get ready for our glitter. We'll be using the Colorflex glitter glue to apply our glitter. I'm just going to put some of this on the board and use two different kinds of makeup brushes to spread this glitter out nice and even. I actually got a little bit too much glue in there and I ended up having to wipe some of that off in the end because you don't want it to be so thick that your glitter pulls in certain areas or you can see clumps of your glitter from oversaturation in some spots. We will be using Pink Panther from PDB Creative Studio. I'm going to dump this bottle in the center of this board and then knock off any excess by grabbing a piece of notebook paper, putting that underneath my board, and tapping it down on the paper to remove any extra glitter. I did give it a light tap before I removed the glitter just so it could get around all those edges. I allowed that to dry for about two hours, and then we're going to go in with about 30 to 40 milliliters of epoxy to give this glitter a really nice coat. I am using the Artistry 1 to 1 ratio facet, so if you are using a facet for a board like this, you do want to work very quickly since it has a smaller window to use before it starts setting up. We're going to add some white swirls into this, so before I do that, I am going to go in with my torch and just pop any micro bubbles that I may have created by swirling around the epoxy over top of that raw glitter. Then I'm going to take my extra epoxy and put some of that in a smaller cup and use the white wave or wave white, I think I said that backwards, and do like half a pump of that into the epoxy. It is very, very pigmented, so you do not need much of this at all. And I'm just going to spread this around in a little zigzag pattern. And then we're going to take our heat gun and spread some of these out. And of course, make sure you are being safe before you mix your part A and part B of your epoxy. Grab a race respirator, put that on, and make sure you are wearing gloves as well. I'm doing my best to avoid getting any epoxy over the edge of my board. If it does happen, you can wipe that up with a baby wipe 
and then go in with a little bit of sandpaper, maybe more of a 320 to 400 grit, and just sand that down nice and smooth to get that extra epoxy off. We're going to let that dry completely, and then it's time to go in with our decals. Y'all have saw me use many of the water slides from Slide Hustle on Etsy in my past tutorials, but they have now actually started selling vinyl decals and pattern vinyl. So if you have saw some of the water slides and love them that I have used in the past, you can actually get them in vinyl now from their Etsy website. This sheet of florals is actually one of those water slides that I had my eye on for the longest time, but I wanted to be able to put them on a little bit darker surface than just white. So these do have, or they are printed on a thin coat of white. So when I start removing them, you'll see that there's almost like a white film in behind them. Very, very similar to the Southern Bell glitter rub on transfers that I use. So you can use these on the darkest of colors. However, they may darken up just a tiny bit whenever you do apply them to darker colors. You will still be able to see the beautiful images. So I just cut out this entire sheet and place them on my tray. We are going to add on some glass stones just for some additional accents. So I place them giving a little bit of room for those stones once we have our decals added on. I have them all mapped out, so I am going to use the hinge method to apply them to the board. Just trim off a little piece of that backing, put it in the position that you want it, and then press that exposed sticky piece down, and then work your way up as you are removing the back. This also helps eliminate any bubbles or anything that you might get under your vinyl. You definitely don't want any bubbles under there and you want to make sure that your edges are pressed down really well so that whenever you do apply your top layer of epoxy, all of those edges and the background is going to disappear. I have a very large bag of glass fire stones and I just sort of carefully went through that bag and picked out the really small bits. I'm going to put on a thin layer of epoxy and then we're going to add on our stones. You want to mix enough epoxy that you can cover your stones as well after you have them on your board. Because they are glass, I always like to cover them. I think it makes them even more beautiful and the epoxy covers any sharp points or edges that those stones may have. Don't forget to torch before you do add on your glass stones because if you put them on on top of epoxy that you have not torched and removed any micro bubbles, you will be able to see those micro bubbles beneath your clear stones and we definitely do not want that.
Once you have all of them in place, grab that extra epoxy you had sitting to the side and very, very carefully put a light drizzle on top of all of your stones. And then once you apply some heat, it will spread out and cover them completely. As you can see, I'm doing very, very small little shakes back and forth to get a very small stream of my epoxy out of my cup. Once you have finished pouring that epoxy over top of your stones, go in with your torch once again and remove any of those micro bubbles. Now, once this cured completely is when I did go over the edges and the back side of this very lightly with a coat of the blush color flex paint. And then I lightly sanded it with 320 grit sandpaper to expose a little bit of that wood but take away the rawness of the edge. I always forget to mention my nifty little stand from Imagination 3D. This is what I place all of my trays and my tumblers on to give them a little bit of an angle so I can take better pictures of them. I hope that y'all have enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. All the materials I have used as well as some discount codes will be down in the description. That is all for today. Thank you all so much and we will see you next time.